Hi everybody, uh, this is Jerry. I wanted to give you a rundown start to finish of how the um, class is put together and what my expectations are and how to get a good strong start to this. Um, I'm seeing a post here from Cecilio. Is something due? I'm kind of lost. And she posted that right over what's due this week and when. So let's go over this whole business of what's a blog, what are these links, how do they work, what's expected, how you can do well in the class, because it's really critical to get a good start. Um, the class is really, really fast in terms of um, getting on board with what's going on and, and getting going right away, because if you fall behind, uh, the class will be over before you know it, and it, it's not going to be a pretty ending. So let's let's do this correctly. Let's get started, and hopefully this will be a big help to you. So um, instead of e-learning, I've used a blog format, and the reason for that is because um, it works so much better in terms of posting videos and images um, easily quickly and cleanly, and it's not all cluttered with all the blue Albertus links and stuff over here. When you click on a picture, it, it creates a large one, except for this group here, which I just pasted in, so these don't open up, but we'll go over that in a second. Um, so anyhow, the syllabus is linked from the blog. This is our sort of meeting place. Um, this is where we communicate. This is where we share our work with each other. Um, but that's one part of it. <clears throat> um, just looking at the links in the upper right, my Photoshop channel on YouTube, I click on that and it takes us over to um, 45 videos I've posted already. Some of them are reacting to um, uh, work that students have done. Um, Digital Photo Week 1, this is a very good introduction for the first week. Um, and this, um, uh, the macro assignment, which means close-up photography, beginning photo editing right here. Um, learning how to edit is like working in a dark room. This is our digital dark room. And amateurs, very, you know, people that know nothing about photography, what they do is they, um, like in the old days, a family would own an Instamatic camera in the 60s and 70s, and you'd drop a cartridge into it, had no adjustments on it, no focus, no shutter speed, no nothing. Then they would drop the cartridge off at the drugstore, and you'd get back a bunch of prints, and you could stick them in your photo album. And usually they were pictures of travel, uh, vacations, family holidays, that sort of thing. Cameras were used to record everyday events. Um, but they had very little artistic value. And so what, how do we step that up? Well, uh, this is an art course at a college level, and we can do much, much more with photography than that. Um, and that begins with um, learning about the basics of seeing light and learning about design and how to focus on that from a very uh, conch mm, intentional way is the right word. Um, and then once you've taken a picture, crafting a beautiful print um, out of the ordinary image is the next step, and that's what we would do in a darkroom. So we've transferred that over to the digital realm, and Photoshop is the tool, the main tool, the most important tool for doing that. So there are all these videos here. You know, for each time we have an assignment, I want you to come over, click this link, and watch a few of these. Um, I have very important information about how to use Photoshop here and how to edit pictures for expression, um, how to find a focal point, how to create a sense of light there, how to quiet the outside edges. So super important. That's the first link. Okay, so how to create a Google Drive folder. Click the second link and a three, almost four minute video on Hi everybody. what it uh, means here's to create a, quick a Google video Drive on how to folder. Set up your Google and Drive. I'll take you through that in this video again a little um, bit. And, um, this is super easy, super fast, and free. It's part of your Albertus tuition because we're Google Apps for Education campus, and that means that you have free access to unlimited storage forever in Google uh, Drive. 
um, unlimited access to YouTube. You have YouTube accounts. I don't know if you knew that. Um, and many, many other things that Google offers. Here's the link to download Photoshop. Very important. Um, I sent your emails to Greg Noblesdorf in ITS. Uh, you don't have to pay for this. He's got to enter your email into um, a special database. And he wrote me back today. This is Wednesday, the first day of class, May 27th, to say that uh, the database was down and that he would get to it a little later. So give that a day or so, and I'll let you know when that's all set. But the first step is to click Sign In over here. And then sign in and use your Albertus credentials, your Albertus email, and continue, and then click. You'll be brought to the Albertus login. And once you're signed into the Adobe sort of Creative Cloud um, ecosphere, then you'll have a link to take uh, download Photoshop. Make sure you choose the right version if you have a Mac or a PC. If you have a Chromebook, that's a whole diff different story now because um, Chromebooks are, are glorified phones without being able to call anybody. Uh, it's the same operating system, the same kind of everything that a phone can do. Uh, and it's not a real operating system. It's not Windows and it's not Macs. So that's another important thing. And I need you to tell me if that's your case so I can modify the class for you so you can succeed. If you keep it a secret from me and you're fiddling around not editing your pictures um, and not using your phone properly, it's going to hurt. It's going to be bad. So that's Adobe and sign in. <clears throat> okay, how to post to the blog, another important video here. So um, here we go Hi, through everybody. exactly how, in case you're so, confused, um, how to go through the process. This is a quick video on clicking. how to use the blog. Uh, um, signing in, you'll see your email at the three, top here. You'll see the link and to new post. I explained it here. It's very easy. It's really much easier um, than e-learning. You're going to love it once you start doing it. What's important is that you... Okay, so class syllabus. Now that is the most important thing. This has to be read through. And you have to look at these links on the left here. Oops, and go ahead um, back to this. Read about the, what the class is trying to accomplish. What are our goals? What topics that you're going to be learning about? Um, and important, we have to compress week one and week two all together into this first week. Um, and it's a little bit shortened week because I go from a Monday to Monday to give you the weekend to finish things. But really, uh, step one, week one, was just get situated, read the, the syllabus, download Photoshop, um, and make a first post to the blog. Week two then starts the, the real photography. Um, so here's a video discussion on how I approach what students have done good, the bad, and the ugly, I say, about 13 minutes. Uh, I recently made this, so it's up to date. Think about the aesthetics and art of photography, and so we have links to people like Ansel Adams and Edward Weston, and read um, and look at their work, read about and look at their work. Um, how does black and white change things, and how does that relate to editing pictures? So. Um, when I talk about the built environment, uh, here's a classic 1940 image from Edward Weston. Um, and it's just an, an old door with peeling paint, but the sunlight is um, raking across it, creating interesting textures. And the balance of the way these shapes work and fill the frame um, and the way it's printed and edited is um, what we're trying to get at or this image of Paul Strands uh, from 1917, the way the shadows of this steel structure are falling down on the, um, the pavement or roadway and uh, looking down as a, as a point of view. Later as we get into look, working in nature, I want you to go back and look at some Edward Weston and Ansel Adams work, Minor White also. Okay, but we're working on first week here. So use 
I call it downtown, but it could also be your house. It could be anything that's built. Um, <clears throat> so beginners shoot things from a distance. I want you to move in and fill the frame. Always shoot with natural light. That's a given. Never, never, never use flash for this class. Okay. Get in close, fill the frame. These words all really matter in here for you to succeed. I really want you to consider all this. Um, you can edit in black and white, and I show you how to do that in the videos again. So here we have another one, part of that big group of 40-something videos. Okay. Now, uh, if you're using a real camera, like a DSLR, you should learn about how aperture, shutter speed, and ISO work together to create photographs that you intend, that they're not just random. So take a peek at this. I'm not going to test you on it. It's the emphasis on the uh, course is on your visual portfolio, and we're not doing tests. We're not doing quizzes. I want you to take pictures and I want them to be edited. Um, so let's just check out on the blog again. So this is your roadmap. You come here every time you're thinking, what do I need to do for class? Come here, read this, and act on these links. These links are your textbook. You should be happy, <laughs> very happy that I didn't require you to have a textbook and quiz you on it because the book I would have ordered for you is about $180. And you don't need it in this era of the internet. I can give you all that you need here just through these links, okay? Um, I have a rubric in here. So what that means is each week, did you do what I've asked? Um, okay, this regards the selfie uh, and biography. And we're combining week one and week two. So check this out okay if i haven't found any work for the week imagine that you got an f for the week uh, but i promised you that you can work back and work forward so uh, there's some flexibility here so but this helps you know kind of how am i doing check here and oh by the way on that image this portrait is lovely when we get to the portraits um, if you don't read and think about what I'm asking you to do, you're going to end up posting snapshots of your kids, and they're not going to cut it, not going to cut it at all. Um, this is something very different than a snapshot of your kid. So, And why is that? So read up on that and watch the videos. <clears throat> um, very good. Well, I mean, that's basically it. And... Um, just want to show you here, um, I don't want to go on too long, but I don't want you to be confused. And this is better than an hour and a half long class, I guess. So how do we get to the Google's universe? We'll start from the Google homepage, google.com. And these nine boxes in the upper right, if I've shown you in the video, get you into the Google universe of all the things that Google has to offer. So we'll click Drive here. And I'm going to take you over to the Naugatuck class one more time to show you. Um, this is my uh, not my Albertus group of classes, which I have thousands and thousands of student portfolios or images from student portfolios. But this is my jnevins.com site, which I do for the Naugatuck class. And because they're not going to be your peers, they're not from Albertus, you won't know anybody. I feel like I can show you this. So... Um, just to click randomly here, I'm going to just look at this. And okay, Adam, the first one, this is from a year ago. Um, so when you first click at the root level, you want to go to My Drive and click New and create a new folder and name it Digital Photo Mod 5 2020 and your name. It's important to put your name in it. So right out here at the root level is what I call the dump. Everything he took, he dumped here. And then from here, I get to help make recommendations on what to edit. Also, I get to check against. So there are hundreds and hundreds of pictures in here. 
check um, what he took pictures of versus what end up being in the final edits. So then we created a subfolder called edited and you do that by once you're in the main folder just click new folder and then looking here um, so these are the pictures he seemed to have edited but he did not put subfolders for each assignment okay so that makes more work for me and it doesn't help things at all it helps you and helps me to make then another subfolder for assignment one assignment two okay um, trying to see project um, one edited project two project three very nice window light portraits okay so this person did well project one edited these are this is the dump again where there will be oh here's the image that I showed you on your um, okay so this is just a window in the classroom and uh, nothing special notice how pictures come off the camera they're not so exciting and in editing them let's go back up again project one edited um, hmm. she's got things that are mixed in here that don't belong like this would be macro macro this is more than project one so I'm, I don't know quite how she was organizing this let me go back here project five which was the portrait one okay so she put in a portrait of her kitty and a squirrel that's the always have to do a squirrel picture and the goose of course but it's really light on the face that I'm trying to get you to think about and look at and look how nice that is um, but that's an, another topic for later as we get okay so project four was macro and that means get in very close and fill the frame it's a little out of focus um, beautiful okay that's an a-level photograph um, so this one's really nice too it's not quite sharp but I'll take it so it became this way through careful looking through editing it did not come off the camera this way okay don't expect that it, they will they don't you have to make them look this way it didn't come off the camera this way this is edited to become this way and um, as we not such a great one and much better so you get the idea Let's sit back here so the portfolio here on Google Drive is the basis for your work think of each project as a major exam and having a minimum of 10 you can have more and she has more she has 5 10 15 20 24 pictures for her macros ranging from her cat's eye to details in nature you know this is a great time in the summer to be doing this now there's all kinds of good stuff to photograph uh, in terms of flowers and uh, things growing this is really nice with um, water droplets on a leaf okay so um, and we have a week to do each of these so you have to work double time at this you know these students had 15 weeks 16 weeks to do this so we kind of have to really get on this and pay attention okay um, I guess I've gone on long enough here but the blog now based on working with your drive working with editing working with putting pictures into your drive building your portfolios we need to stay in touch here on the blog this is where I look for you and it's where I sort of take the key to go look on the blog onto the drive I'm sorry to see what you're up to um, goes without saying only new work is acceptable you can't post pictures of your vacation last year trip to Puerto Rico in 2019 doesn't cut it 
um, and take time to do this. I, I do this Monday to Monday routine. So you, if you're working, you'll have some time over the weekend, uh, Sunday morning, to go out shooting and uh, um, do what you need to do to succeed in this. This is a very good balance to the other kinds of regular academic classes that you're used to taking with a textbook and tests. You know, I'm asking you to be introspective, to be thoughtful, to care about what you're doing, to be perceptive and intuitive. These are values that um, you don't often hit in a business course necessarily or in a math course or a science course. And those are very important other ways of thinking, but um, this is art, so we're here to, to learn about art and create it. And it's your, in your creation uh, of a portfolio that the grade comes together and you get value out of the course. So 20 minutes, gone on long enough. Please email me if you have any questions, if you have any confusion. Um, is something due? I'm kind of lost, so I hope we've answered Cecilia. Um, read, read, read look through the links, think about what we're doing. Also, another very important thing is to go to Google Drive, I'm sorry, Google itself, click images, and just say uh, photo composition, let's just say. As you're thinking about what you're going to take pictures of, it's great to come over to Google Images and say, Oh, look at this cool shot looking out at a pier, and then we have this perfect symmetry where the focal point is right down the middle, and we have this one-point perspective. So then that leads us to this link, How to Use Symmetry in Photography. So then we can click that and read through an article also. So um, don't just go out taking snapshots like you're used to doing. That's not the point of the class. We're here to engage and learn some new things and really improve our work um, uh, to a, actually a professional level. It's possible. It's possible very much so. So um, you have to dream a little bit, think a little bit. Clicking on this link, what are the rules of thirds and rules of composition? Um, how does that work? That would be a good one to look up. How about this one? This is what one point perspective is all about. How does that work? Anyway, 22 minutes, so I'm going to stop here. Please email me and let's have fun. Take care.